This is the future. Evolution. This is the future. Hi guys and welcome back to the Corsa Project Part 2. And the main aim of this video is to show you how I repaired the cam box. Unfortunately the job became much bigger than I originally thought. I also have to do a major service and then the reason for most of the voiceover is because everything in the background had either music in it or the noise of people breaking tiles as they were busy to revamp the house. So of course we're going to start off first by removing the front wheel so we can gain access to the crank pulley. Next up we remove the airbox and all the pipes and wires connected to the top. I continued to remove all plugs, electrical wiring, cables, pipes and whatever I could find that was connected to the top. Next thing is that I prepared to make sure that the timing was correct. I made sure that piston 1 was at the top and that the valves were rocking. So that if I have my timing marks in place I know this um, engine is 100% correct on its timing. Next I removed the fan belt and to do that I had to release the tension on the alternator. I then removed the cover on the timing belt. While I was trying to remove the bolt on the crank, the timing belt snapped. I don't know why the bolt was that tight, but I was anyway planning on putting up a new timing belt and tensioner. So this just made the stripping a bit more difficult since the crank is now turning freely and there's nothing I can do about it. I proceeded to get ready to remove the cam box by removing that plate and removing that cover or at least loosening it for now. Just to show you how old this engine is, this pipe was so brittle that while I was trying to take it off it actually started tearing and breaking off in my hand. At this point I had the cam box already taken to the place where they do aluminium welding to weld that thing for me. Now our problem here is since the crank keeps on turning and there's no way to block it or to stop it, I had to find another way how to take that pulley off because you cannot change the timing button everything while the cover is on. So the only option was to remove the sump and to take a hammer and block the crank from moving from the inside and remove the nut. Also, since I took off the cam box, I also realized that I actually loosened the head. And since there's over 270,000 Ks on this engine, I thought it's a good idea just to do the head gasket as well. While we already stripped as far as this, we might as well continue and do the head gasket too. And while I was turning the crank, water was coming out from the head, so that's how I knew the seal was already broken. So I might as well have done everything already, so I just proceeded to do the entire head. Since I knew this job was going to be a bit bigger now, I proceeded to remove the battery terminals and then continued to strip the rest of the engine. After disconnecting the battery terminal, I proceeded to drain all the oil out of the engine and I removed the spark plug cables after marking them where they are supposed to go. I once made the mistake of putting them back in the wrong place and uh, the car didn't start very well, it didn't idle very well and it's all because I put the cables in wrong. So remember to mark your cables. Next up is draining the water from the radiator. Next up is to remove the exhaust manifold. For me to be able to take off the exhaust manifold I had to remove the entire radiator. It's just easier to give me some space and um, it works like a charm. It's so easy to take out that radiator, it's really not that difficult. Now since the air intake manifold is coming out with the head, it is time to remove everything that's connected to the manifold. That's not fuel accelerator cables, electrical cables, fuel lines, pipes, the fuel rails as well as the injectors. With the head now off, it was time to remove the sump so that we can try and 
stop or break the crank just to get that pulley off. Pro tip, if you can't get the sump off, there's probably some hidden bolts. So you see these two holes at the bottom of the gearbox? There's actually two hidden bolts in there that holds the sump as well. You are going to need a special tool, maybe a smaller tube socket. But uh, if you can't get it off, or if the sump doesn't fall off, it's because there is a bolt somewhere. And this is where the two hidden bolts are that's connected to the Corsa. Okay guys. Once those two hidden bolts were out, the sump just fell out without any issues. So I got this pulley off. I just wedged a hammer in between the piston or by the crank and then I loosened that bolt. I cannot believe the bolt was so tight, honestly. The pulley at the bottom is nice and snug, it's not worn out or anything, so there is no issues there. Water pump has got no issues there. Still turning nice, there's no play, no gaps. So I'm just gonna get a new timing belt and we're just gonna put a new timing belt. Even the, let me go this way. Even the timing is already on its place. As you guys can see, it's nice and snug there. There's no worn out part. This thing is not going anywhere. Now that all the stripping is done, it's time for the big work, which is cleaning. I have to start getting all that old gasket off, get the old gasket out anyway. Um, start cleaning the pistons, cleaning the heads and cleaning all the spares. And of course, replacing everything new. New oil filter, new spark plugs, new air filter and do a complete service. This is the seal that goes inside the cover. Now look at this. Look how thin it is there. I just have that space to play with. It seems like it fell or maybe it cracked and when he cleaned it it chipped I'm not sure what happened there it didn't look like that before it went away but if I put the seal on it seems like it's just just gonna catch on that area it might seal it but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of Prattly steel and just fill up that gap just to give it more of a, a flat surface just to make sure it doesn't leak past there and leak down there. Then this whole exercise was for nothing. Then I have to strip everything off again. Otherwise the head looks good and I welded it nicely. This full juice is bothering me a bit. It was closed up by the welding. I opened it up now with a center punch. I put in there to open the hole a bit. Now I'm gonna have to take a bolt and see if uh, the thread is still good, if I can use that thread. I'm oh, using some steel wool, scotch guard, and also um, paraffin. I was able to clean off most of the carbon, clean the head nice and clean, and uh, also checked for no, any ridges, made sure the pistons are having not uh, a lot of play, making sure uh, that the piston rings are fine. So now this block is good to go. As I was preparing to clean the side of the engine to make ready for the new uh, gasket, I realized that there was no gasket on the sump to begin with. There was no gasket on this side and there's no gasket on the sump side. Seems like they just put some liquid silicon gasket maker on and they just tied it down. Weird. I took out the sump plate and I cleaned the entire sump. I cleaned the surface, cleaned the inside, even cleaned the plate itself. And now it's time to put everything back. At least I got a gasket for the sump again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of a gasket maker just to put it on the side of the engine to make sure that the gasket itself doesn't fall off. And I'm also going to put a little bit on the side of the sump just to make sure it seals 100%. Because the last thing I want is another bunch of oil eggs. I just double check the area to make sure that everything is definitely clean clean and that uh, there's nothing remaining of the old gasket or sealant and I also made sure that the strainer, the oil pickup and everything is also clean and that there's nothing funny going on down here. Now the gasket is in place, it is time to put the sump back in.
Another thing to remember guys is that it's got a core gasket, which means you don't FT it when you tighten it down. Just tighten it by hand until you can't turn it anymore with one hand. If you want to torque it, it's like 4 newton meters, but I don't have a torque wrench that small, so don't over tighten it, you can damage the gasket. This is one of those hand pumps that you use to blow up balloons with, and this is actually working very nice for the holes. So I want to get the water out of these pockets where the bolts are going, the head bolts. And uh, this actually works quite nice. Put it in and inflate and it blows out the air for me. I don't have a compressor so I have to make a plan. So this plan is working actually very nice. So I'm going to try and get all the water out of the holes where the bolts go. Now that the block is ready, it's time to clean this head. I need to get all this old gasket off and clean it as best I can. Pro tip, when you take out your rockers, your lifters and your shims, put them exactly where you took them out. Don't make the same mistake I did that time with the Corsa Bucky where I just threw everything in one bucket and washed it because your shims has got different thicknesses. Your intake and exhaust valves doesn't open the same amount of gaps. So make sure you put the stuff in exactly where you took it out. Okay guys, time to check for warpage. You use a 0.08mm filler gauge and then you take a steel ruler, you put it on different parts of the head and then while you put it down on the head, the aim of the game is to see if your filler gauge can fit through underneath the ruler. If at any time at any place it goes underneath the ruler the head is warped then you have to take it for skimming another thing you have to buy is brand new head bolts look at the condition of these old bolts they are rusted and they are stretched head bolts are designed for only once off use now as you can see this head is beautifully clean um, I didn't see the need to reseat the valves and I even don't have the spring compressor tool to take the valves out anyway so I didn't bother reseating the valves. I just cleaned the entire head nice and clean. The gasket doesn't specifically state which is top and which is bottom but I guess you take it as it is and you just put it in and all the holes align. Plus you can see there's a little bit of a gap in between there whereas you can see where the old gasket was sitting it had the same solid design as there and obviously you cannot put it in like this it's not gonna match the holes are mismatched so it can only go up one way but I do know some gaskets do tend to show you um, top bottom and so on so there we go new gasket is on let's prepare the head and put the head back okay guys now we just do everything in reverse the head is on we're going to put the hydraulic lifters and rockers and everything back and then we're going to put our cam box back put our new head bolts and tie everything down I just want to show you guys what I did with the cam box so that's where I put the Prattly steel just to build that surface up a little bit more took a file just made the surface nice and flat and also that hole that was closed up a bit I had to use another bolt that's a bit smaller than the one that normally goes in there. I think it was an 8mm. And I had to cut new thread. So that will be the only specialized bolt on the whole cam box. To top the head bolts, you're going to start initially with 25 newton meters in sequence. And then three stages of 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and a fourth stage of 45 degrees. Now let's top the bolts. At this point I've installed a new oil filter, the head bolts are in place and I've put the cam gear on and I've put it on its timing so now we know the timing is correct so if I put the timing belt on it should be 100%. Well, next up you just proceed to put everything back that was loose, all electrical cables, pipes, fittings, plates and everything else that you need to put back. I probably should have checked this before I started assembling that. Look at that gap. 
For now, this is the only thing that I can think of doing is putting TFT um, gasket maker on here, nice and thick, and hope that it's going to seal this gap. Good news, guys! <laughs> I got the the clip. It was lying on the ground. So I'm just going to put that back. But there we go. The engine is complete. Everything is together. Um, we've got oil levels right, water levels right. We took it for a spin. I put in some petrol, came back now. The only issue I have is the exhaust fumes going past that exhaust pipe there. But we'll get a ring for that. Uh, tomorrow I'll be going to work with it. So for the next two days I'll be driving about 120 k's. And then we'll see again if there's any leaking. But as you guys can see, the initial leak is not there anymore. The initial problem is stopped. There's no leaking coming from the, between the cam box and the head. There's no water coming from the head gasket. And our sump is also dry. There's no oil coming from the gasket. Okay, from the top side, I am extremely happy. The water level is still good. Oil level is still good. Uh, no leaks. The sealant, however, is a bit wet. I'm not sure how long it's going to take for that sealant to to set. As you guys can see, I can still see it, but nothing's leaking from the top. There's no water coming out, no oil coming out. The heat gasket there is um, nice to see. So, guys, if you like this video, remember to subscribe to this channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and remember to hit that bell icon. If you want to get notified every new of my further uploads so until next time guys whatever you do keep it safe cheers